In this video, I'm gonna show you how to build and install these tiled shelves. And this is part three of a five part series. In the last part, I showed you how to install all the tile. And in this part, we're gonna address the shelves. And if you're new to this channel, my name's Josh Chills. It's all about building your own house, saving a ton of money. So be sure to subscribe, ring that bell so you get notification every time I release a new video, and hammer that like button for me. That's all I ask for turn for making this video. So we got a lot to do today, so let's get started. When it comes to shelving for your tiled shower, you have a few options. The first option is just to buy the pre-manufactured shelves that you can get at Lowe's, Home Depot, or Amazon, and those are just gonna set right into the tile. And then there's another option, which is a recessed niche, and it's like a built-in into the wall. And they're a lot of work, but they look really nice. Now I like to use this option where I make the shelving out of tile, and using a 24 inch tile, I can make two shelves. And then if I was using the 12 inch by 12 inch square tile, each one of those square tiles, I can make one shelf. And I like to put four shelves in my showers. So I'm gonna show you how to make them out of the 24 inch tile. The first thing I'm gonna to do to lay out this tile is measure off this edge nine and one eighth and make a mark. And then come off this edge nine and one eighth and make a mark. And now what I need to do is come down the tile nine and one eighth and also make a mark and down this side nine and one eighth and make a mark. So more or less what I'm gonna do is just take my tile saw and cut it down and then cut long ways here and we're gonna make a nine and one eighth square and a nine and one eighth square. Since I need four of them shelves total, I'm gonna go ahead and take another piece of tile and go ahead and lay it out while I'm at it. And like always, be sure to wear eye protection and ear protection when using the wet saw. If you're wondering if nine and one eighth inch shelves was plenty, in this case for this size shower, it's perfect. I have experimented with different sizes and different showers. And for the simple three foot wide by five foot long shower, it was just right. Theoretically, I now have a nine and one eighth square. And what I'm gonna do here, is go ahead and place it right into this little notch that's in the wet saw. And I'm gonna line the peak of this square up with the blade of the wet saw. And then I'm just gonna cut this square right in half. If you are not using 24 inch tile, you can also just cut down your simple 12 inch by 12 inch tiles down to nine and one eighth as well. So you get the same result. I'm gonna first begin by drying the tiles off really well. I'm now going to take thin set that's for porcelain tile because this is porcelain tile. Now if you're using ceramic tile, you're going to have to use ceramic tile thin set. Now that both of these are back buttered, we're just going to take our quarter inch notch trowel and just scrape it off evenly. And I'm just going to do the same to the other one. Now that both sides are back buttered, I'm just going to go ahead and sandwich them together with the finished sides up like so. And now I'm just going to wiggle them together really nice to make sure there's a really good bond. And you will squeeze some out from the sides, but that's okay because we're just going to clean that up here in just a second. So you're going to have something like that. Now I'm just going to take my hand or finger and smear off the excess. And now the main thing about this is making sure this face is lined up perfectly flush with each other. So if you look here at the side angle, you can see we are lined up really well. So now we're gonna go lay this down and let it dry for 24 hours before we install the face. So now what we gotta do, we gotta measure across this face and we got about 12 and seven eighths. So what we gotta do is add a quarter inch of that measurement that gives us 13 and an eighth. We also need to measure the thickness of the shelf. So if we measure it, we look, it looks like we got about five eighths of an inch. So always add a little bit to it. So I'm gonna cut them three quarter inch wide because we wanna make sure there's plenty of coverage over this face. So we're gonna cut it three quarter inch wide by 13 and an eighth long. We gotta cut faces for each one of these shelves. So let me show you how I do it. I went ahead and cut this tile down to 13 and an eighth. And of course, we're not gonna use this whole tile, but now all I gotta do is just cut three quarter inch strips off of it. If you are going to be building a tiled shower yourself, I highly recommend you invest in a wet saw, especially when you're ripping down pieces like this. It's definitely an invaluable tool and you're gonna need it. I now gotta put a bevel on each end of this face. And what I do, I just freehand it on the wet saw. 
I'm now gonna go somewhere where I can set this tile shelf up like this because I'm gonna be able to work on the face of it without it laying flat on something. And I'll show you why here in just a second. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take the face that we just cut and I'm gonna rasp the edges. And if you need any of these products like this sponge, be sure to check out the links in the description below and you'll be able to find all the products that I use in this video. I'm now going to pick a side that I want for the top of the shelf. And this top here is what I want. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay it right up like this. And I know this bottom is gonna be the bottom of the shelf. And we're gonna kinda of steady it right there. And now all we gotta do is take what's called silicone caulk. I know a lot of people are familiar with this. I usually get the tub and tile line or any of it that has the mold resistant properties to it. I just feel like that's best for any area with a good bit of humidity or um, dampness. So now I'm just gonna put a nice liberal bead across the face of this shelf. And this will act as a strong adhesive. Silicone is actually a really good adhesive for areas like this. It's probably not as strong as like a liquid nails or anything, but it's definitely gonna be perfect for this job. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and lay this right where we want to install it on the face. And we're going to make sure that this top part that we want as our top of the shelf, we wanna make sure the, this lip is actually down below here just a little bit because you don't want water coming and collecting. If it's up high like this, it's gonna settle right here. And if it's down lower, it's gonna run over then run down to the drain. So you want it flush or a little bit below. So now we're gonna just wiggle that right into place. All right, and all this caulk that's pushed up through, don't worry about wiping this off right now because after it sets up, we'll just take a razor knife and cut that off. So now all we gotta do is let it sit right like that and let it cure for at least 12 to 24 hours, preferably 24. The silicone on this shelf has been drying for about 12 hours. I'm here the next day and I got the razor scraper and what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and scrape that silicone right off. And it's still a little soft yet, but that's all right because as long as it's holding that face on, that's all that matters. And be sure to address both sides of the shelf. I'm now gonna show you how to install the shelf into this corner. So as you can see, this is the top because the face is dropped down from the edge just ever so slightly. And then the bottom, obviously the face dropped down below it just a little bit. So it's gonna set right like that. So first thing I gotta do is put thin set on each one of these sides. Now that we got a nice even coat on the edges, we're just gonna set it right back into that corner. And then just kind of wiggle it back into place. Now's a good time if you have any excess thin set, go ahead and try to remove it off from below. It's much easier to do this now than later. Next, you're gonna take two plastic shims and put the eighth inch side right up under this side and then the other side of the face. I'm now gonna take a torpedo level and level it up from side to side. And as you can see, we're sitting pretty good right there where we are at and I can go up just ever so slightly on this end. Now that looks good. Now what I gotta do is take two shims, put them back to back like this, and I'm gonna tuck it right back in the back corner. I'm now gonna take a torpedo level and check from the back corner to the face to make sure we have a good slope coming off because we want water to drain off the shelf, but we wanna make sure it's not too aggressive something really comfortable. And now I'm just gonna kinda of shift it back into place one more time to make sure that thin set seals around the edge. Now all I gotta do is clean up the thin set off the top of the shelf and it is installed. The best method that I've found to cut around these shelves is I'll go ahead and line up the tile where it's gonna be installed at on the wall. So right about there is where it's gonna be. And now you wanna make sure you're at the same elevation down here as well. So that looks like exactly where it's gonna go. So now I just take my pencil and lay it flat on the shelf, and this is just standard carpenter's pencil, and then just slide it right across the shelf like so. And as you can see, I scribed the exact slope of the shelf onto the tile. And now I'm just gonna mark about a 16th away from the edge of this shelf. So about right there. 
And the reason why I don't come out a whole eighth for the grout joint is because once it's uh, set into place, it's gonna come out just a little bit and it's gonna create a little bit bigger gap. So a sixteenth is what I do. And now that we got this marked, I need to mark where the height of the shelf is gonna be once it's installed. So I'm gonna slot it right up to the shelf. And now I'm just going to take a spacer here and slot it right where it needs to go. And I'm just gonna mark right on top of the spacer. And right there is gonna be the height in which I gotta rip this down. So now I gotta show you how to transcribe this slope up above to give me the correct cutout. So the first thing I gotta do is measure up to that mark we made when we butt it up against tile shelf. And it looks like it's about seven eighths heavy. So now I'm gonna come over here and I'll always burn an inch so that way I can get a little more precise measurement. So I'm gonna mark the seven eighths heavy which is more or less 15 sixteenths. So in order to address the slope, as you can see, since this is a short run, there's not much of a slope here, but if we measure it, it looks like we're about an eighth and just, just a little bit more than eighth, maybe a 32nd or a 64th. Then down here, we got about exactly an eighth. So with that little bit of difference, I'm probably not gonna be able to mark that difference and cut it, to be honest with you. So I'm just going to add just a fraction to this measurement and then down here we're just going to keep it the same because that's going to be where it ends at the shelf so now all i got to do is make a straight line from point to point and then i'm just going to square up this mark here so now i just got to cut this section out and that's going to go over the shelf i just cut that out with the wet saw so now before i put any thin set on the wall i always double check to make sure it's cut out properly you definitely don't want to cut it and then put more on the wall and then not work out right so that's lined up exactly where it's going to be and as you can see we got a nice even cut around that shelf and it matches this grout joint as well so that's what you want so now when i go to cut out this one you're going to see that it's more of an obvious slope because it's a longer distance. So I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna cut this slope over here. Also, be sure to use your diamond sponge and rasp these edges as well because they're gonna be exposed cuts. As you can see, that tile is installed, looks good, and all I had to do is cut a piece to fit in to finish it, not too complicated. Now this next one is gonna be a longer rip down in order to go around this shelf. So it's gonna be a little more, not necessarily complicated, but you gotta be a little more careful. So we're gonna go ahead and set this towel right into place and it's already cut the length to finish this run. So I'm gonna set it exactly where it's gonna be setting when it's installed, other than it's gonna be sitting on top of the shelf for now until we mark everything. Okay, so right there is exactly where it's gonna be setting. So I'm gonna first take my carpenter's pencil and just scribe the slope going straight off the side of the towel, like so. So as you can see, it's more or less about an eighth down to nothing. And now what I gotta do, again, mark about 16th away from that shelf's edge. And that's all there is to that part. So now we're gonna take the tile, come over here, set it right on top of where it's gonna be installed. So like this, we're gonna slide it tight to the shelf. And now I'm gonna take a spacer that's gonna act as the grout joint. And I'm gonna just mark the top of the spacer and then that's gonna be our elevation of the rip. So now I'm gonna show you how to mark it off just like we did earlier. In order to cut this out properly, I must first burn an inch off my tape measure so I can get a precise measurement. And it looks like about seven eighths. So I'm gonna come down here on this side and mark seven eighths, cause that's gonna be the height in which this run ends. And now we need to measure the difference between this slope to from end to end. So I'm gonna come over here. It looks like I got about an eighth down to nothing. So I know there's an eighth inch difference from this end of the slope to the other. So I gotta add the eighth over to this side. So if it's seven eighths, I need to come up two or a whole inch. So I'm gonna go up an inch and make a mark. I more or less just add the difference of the slope to this end. And now I'm gonna just draw a straight line from this point to this point using any type of straight edge. It doesn't matter what you use as long as it's straight. And now I'm gonna go ahead and describe that mark. And obviously this end over here is just going to be square. So this is just gonna be like so. And now when I cut that out, in theory, that should be the perfect cutout. All right, I just got this cut out. 
And now we're going to go ahead and test it before we put the thin set on the wall. And I'm going to try to gap it here appropriately. Looks like my level line is right up here, so I got to shift it into place. So it looks like something like that. And if you ask me, that cut turned out really nice. So that scribe method usually works well for me. And again, everything isn't perfect, but it looks pretty good. So I'm happy with that. So now I'm going to install this tile and keep rolling with it. This is the layout I like to do with my tile shelving. And here it is with all the cuts around the shelves. Next, I'm going to install this mosaic tile in the bullnose trim. And if you want to see how I'm going to do that, check out this video. It'll help you out. 